Hey everyone, John here with the Active Towns channel. Uh, this is a short excerpt from episode number 198 with Amy Kenrive from Denver, Colorado. And I'm pulling this together because uh, yesterday, July 21st, we had yet another uh, sort of dust up uh, in a quote unquote historic neighborhood uh, complaining about the unsightliness of the <laughs> ubiquitous flex posts uh, that are designed to help keep our streets safer, at least temporarily, until more robust uh, infrastructure can be put in. Uh, personally, I don't particularly like them either. I would much rather see this uh, done in, in more robust materials, concrete, hey, even depaving, do a rain garden. But nonetheless, this is what we get until, as a placeholder, until we can get more permanent infrastructure. Uh, let's just jump into this with Amy. When did you also start getting engaged in, uh, involved in just overall safer streets advocacy work? Oh, I mean, one thing leads to another. I would say the tipping point for me was when um, I got wind that some neighbors in along Marion Parkway were objecting to a protected bike lane in front of a, a school. And I thought, well, that's crazy. Why? Why would you, um, that, that does not make any sense at all to me. I've never heard of anybody objecting to a bike lane, especially in front of a school. Didn't make sense. Uh, so I started to stick my nose into that in a way that I don't know many people are ballsy enough to do, which, which meant meeting with the opposition. I crossed the I crossed the picket line, and I went behind the scenes, and um, I went into the condo building that had created a petition to stop this protected bike lane along what they considered their street. So let's set let's set this up a little bit. We're we're looking at an overhead image here, um, and hopefully, if I've planned this out right, it's a it's a relevant overhead image. What are we looking at? Um, this is butterflies stenciled onto the street in the spot where Alexis Bounds was hit and killed by a driver. And, and that event that took place, I think this is with the, the one year anniversary of, of her, her death. Is that correct? Yeah, this was to celebrate the, um, one year anniversary, well, I guess not celebrate, but um, right. uh, mark the one year anniversary. Yeah, uh, Memorial of the day Day call attention died. too. And so that that was part of the call to action. And this is how you and I got connected in social media. And so I caught wind of this, you know, situation that was emerging, which is exactly what you were explaining, was this seemingly baffling resistance to making a safer street, a street that the call to action from the community, from you all, was that, hey, we've got a problem here. We need safer streets. And Alexis's unfortunate and tragic death is a great illustration as to why we need safer streets. Yeah. I mean, Alexis, so that happened, her death happened in July, but the opposition to the bike infrastructure started months and months before. Mm -hmm. And the horrific thing is even after she died, they continued to stick to their messaging, which is it's not needed. Um, these are Alexis's sons helping us paint and um, stencil on the sidewalk um, in preparation for that day, the commemoration of her one year death, which was just about as heartbreaking as, um, I, I just can't, I, it was really difficult to, to watch that, um, to watch them come and help us. Uh, this is a picture of David Chen and Molly McKinley who were, um, organizing this with me. We really worked as a team and everyone had their, their strengths. Um, this was 2020, July, 2020. So you, you can see, even though it was super hot, we were um, masked up at this point outside. That's David's cargo bike that he brought all kinds of stuff, um, <laughs> stuff on brooms and um, heavy ladders uh, to hang the lanterns in, in the trees. But it took us three days to, to paint the street um, and then we had a, a ride um, 
uh, some speeches by Teddy. I think this is Teddy on the right. Um, that's Alexis's husband giving this. Oh, no, that's David. Sorry, my my eyes are, uh, but Teddy did speak and then David spoke. David got a, um, got the city to put a bench in, um, in memory of Alexis and also the sign, um, in memory of Alexis Bounds. So, and you're, and you're right. I mean, this continued on a year later in, in, in 2021, you know, here we are, it's still, <laughs> it's still going on. You guys are still working through this. And, and this little flyer says cyclist voices needed. And really, I, I, whenever I see something like this, I, I, I would really try to caution folks, broaden the tent. It shouldn't just be cyclist voices are needed. It's like everybody's voice is needed. We need safer streets for everybody. And oh, by the way, this protected bike lane will help make it safer for everyone. Not only people riding bikes, but also people who are pedestrians because what we're trying to do is traffic calm. We're trying to slow down the motor vehicle traffic. Yeah, yeah. Um, So this was, uh, yeah, we did kind of hit it from all angles. The, The flyer that... Um, you had up, that was something that we specifically gave to cyclists and taped on to bikes. Um, so, uh, but looking back, you're right. Messaging could have been tweaked a little bit. Um, when I spoke to audiences like this, this is, um, a a neighborhood association meeting in East Wash Park, uh, the neighborhood association that, um, the, the neighbors that were opposing the project lived in, um, that was definitely what I tried to get across was this was this project would benefit everybody. Oh yeah, the, some of these things I forget about. Um, the Pro Wash Park profile did did a ride. I don't know who like how these things happen um, or how I get wrapped up in them, but uh, I this is another example of using my kids as a kind of yeah. like advocacy ammunition um, hey, because when you work. see a kid. I know. I know you, I mean, I always talk about how kids are unpredictable and, um, I mean, how else am I going to teach my then, I don't know how old he was then nine, maybe, um, how else is he going to learn the rules of the road and, um, how to eventually ride his bike to middle school and high school. Um, it's, it's not as intuitive as you think. If you have not been through driver's ed, you haven't had that experience of being in a car and not being able to see because your, your view is blocked or just being in a hurry and uh, just not paying attention. You, yeah. you, you need you need kids to, to learn how to ride in the road and um, and you want people of all ages to be able to ride on the road. So yeah. uh, I, I use my kids all of the time. If I'm gonna be on the news, I to do an interview, I bring my kids with me yeah. for sure. Yeah, I love it. Well, and that's and and the, and the relevance to that is that what we're talking about is creating an environment which is appropriate for all ages and abilities, and uh, and that's exactly what I want to illustrate here. Is a, a, I'll press play on this. Video. And you can talk a little bit about the conditions. Now, this is from last summer um, when I was in town to film uh, the interviews for the uh, Denver uh, e-bike incentive program. I was doing that for Bicycle Colorado. And so I had a chance uh, uh, to go out and ride the the facility because I I wanted to see it. And so this is circa last summer, last fall, September or last fall. Um, I don't know if anything has changed. Um, but walk us through, because this is the end result. It did happen. Um, you were able to overcome the resistance, and now you have an all ages and abilities facility. It's got to be gratifying to see how far this has come. Yeah, uh, 100%. Uh, this was one of the first protected um, concrete barrier bike lanes in Denver. And um I'm hoping that the people that opposed this infrastructure before now see so many more people riding the street. And um, you can see even people that are walking and and running end up using the street. A lot of times I see strollers in the bike lane, which doesn't bother me at all. There is a walking path on the um, to the right and a sidewalk uh, further off on the left. Um, but yeah, I think it turned out great. Uh, there's, uh, I, I can see that Denver is um, working on continuously improving the design of the protected uh, bike lanes throughout the city. I personally wish these barriers were a little bit 
um, taller or harder to roll over with your tires um, because drivers that are dropping off kids at Steele Elementary, which is just past this light on the um, left side of the screen, you can kind of see the sign for it there. But on the other side, um, coming up the other direction, a lot of times drivers will pull over, uh, roll their tires over the, the concrete barrier and drop off their kids, which funny side note there, a couple of years ago, there was a parent there and this, this was just so fantastic. He made these signs that were, um, they said they looked like city signs. They're metal and they had the, they're on these metal posts and they said, reserved parking for the lazy and selfish. (laughs) (laughs) He put like four of them along the, in the grass median along at like where people were using the bike lane as a parking lane to drop off their kids. And, um, I, the bike advocacy community just like loved it. And I happened to run into this guy at a whole foods bike rack and I was like, it's you, it's you. And then he moved away and I don't know his name, but he's, he's famous to me. Um, yeah. One of the, the reason these barriers, though, are not more substantial is because uh, we have quite large fire trucks in Denver that um, uh, the fire department is a, a little bit, in my opinion, more conservative than I would like. Right. Yeah. And we'll, we'll pause here just for a second to, to talk a little bit about what some of the resistance was, um, because I think it's, it, it is helpful to try to understand. You had mentioned that you, you decided to, to like infiltrate <laughs> the enemy oh, yeah. and, 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 and better, but, but more importantly, um, have an opportunity to be empathetic and try to understand what the resistance really was, um, can, can you kind of share what it was, you know, some of the things that they were concerned about and, uh, and, and, and really help, help, help us understand. I, when it came down to it, their main concern was visual. Um, they thought that it would be ugly. Uh, so, so the very first thing that comes to mind when you, you talk about aesthetics and the resistance to it, we hear it uh, globally, all all across the, the the world here, is oh those ugly plastic sticks. <laughs> They're talking about the flex posts, and we see one flex post here uh, in in the visual. Was that one of the resistance? Was you know, those are ugly plastic sticks? We don't want those. <laughs> Yeah, a hundred percent. They really use the historic preservation argument. This parkway has a historic desert. It's a historic parkway, and they were sending uh, open records requests to the city. They were pulling up these documents that preserve that officially preserved the parkway, not the street. By the way, they were confusing. They thought that the entire the grass and like the entire right of way was included in this historic preservation. And unfortunately, they, they, uh, I think they were, they should have been maybe a little bit more strategic in their arguing for historic preservation because what ended up happening, I thought this was pretty funny. Um, Channel 9, Kyle Clark, did a bit on this and he pointed out that they're not arguing, they don't, what they don't want They don't want historic preservation because he showed a picture of the street a hundred and some years ago where it was, you know, it was dirt and there were horse and buggies. There are no vehicles on the street at all. What he said they wanted was preservation of the present, not preservation of of history. So I thought that was really poignant. I think that's really, really important to pause and, 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 and talk about because that's exactly what we end up seeing when we see the resistance to change, when we see not in my backyard, not in my front yard, don't change the streetscape. It's it's a bit of a fear of the unknown. It's a bit of trying to preserve the status quo of what we have now because you know we, be, you know, society, the, the people that are, are living in this area, it's what we're used to. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, let's let's kind of keep it hit as it is. The irony, of course, is, yeah, if you really want to look at the historical context, yeah, these weren't even paved roads. You know, that's how old this really is. The automobiles are actually the interlopers. The automobiles are actually 
the thing that is degrading the livability and the quality of the environment, not the other yeah. way around. Not people, not people walking, mm-hmm. biking, or riding horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I wish that I could uh, explain all that uh, to people when they when they have those objections to change. Um, when they're scared like that, um, I wish that I could sit them down and say, do you realize, <laughs> do you, do, like, let's take a step back, like you said, and and understand how how did we get here and what has it done to our communities and our, our planet? Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the narratives that came about, and I think it's positive to have these arguments and these, these, these challenges, is that it helps us have a better understanding of what's truly important. And I'm scanning, I'm looking at the parking that is still available here on the street. And we're looking at the the fact that there's still plenty of, of, of space for people to be able to drive through this area. They're just going to do so most more slowly, more carefully. It becomes a more welcoming environment for everybody. And again, all ages and abilities. And, but one of the narratives that that did come about and is important for us to come about is to have this discussion of what is more important, the health and safety of people (laughs) walking, biking and driving, uh, or the preservation of aesthetics or the preservation of, uh, of parking or the preservation of being able to drive through an area as fast as possible. Um, I mean, we can see that, you know, that was a 20 mile per hour sign right there. This is not an area where, you know, you should be imagining that, yeah, you're going to be able to, to drive through as fast as possible. What's really, really interesting is that oftentimes some of the people who um, end up resisting change and resisting these types of infrastructure, one of the things that they talk about is uh, that when you say, well, what what would you like to see change or what what would you like to you know, if if you could w- wave a magic wand and make your street, you know, more welcoming, what would it be? And this is, well, people are just speeding. They're going too fast. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? well, it's like, oh, hey, have I have I got a plan for you? Because, hey, this is <laughs> we've got common ground here. <laughs> yeah, I love to find the common ground. I think that is really helpful when you're talking to people who have opposite views as you, um, not just, you know, talking about bike lanes, but all kinds of situations, because oftentimes you do find that everybody wants something similar. Um, and, and, um, we get so hung up on, you know, you know, the same thing has happened on Broadway, a few streets over, um, a bike lane is a protected bike lane has been going in there for, um, the past year or so they're still working on it, but we need to understand that that's going to, that it's for, it's going to improve that project. Isn't just for bikes. It's for pedestrians. The city is also working on the drainage underneath. They're replacing uh, the signals there. Uh, It's going to make it better for everyone who uses that street. And I, I hope that some of the people that live, that these are the towers that you're panning over to here where the petition, the epicenter of the petition. Oh, see, Um, I didn't even know that. I I was just intuitively doing that. So there you go. Oh man. I, I spent too much time probably up in the, on the 15th floor there at someone's kitchen table with, with, uh, with the organizers of the petition, just mostly listening, um, asking them questions to try to find common ground, showing them that I am a human being. I'm not some, you know, I'm not what they envision as a cyclist, which uh, would be somebody in spandex on a road bike that's going 25 miles an hour down their street. I, I tried as best I could when they, when they would say, we would look out off the balcony and they would say, see that, see, see that, uh, bike. They didn't even that bike. They didn't even stop at the stop sign. And at the same time, there were cars drivers doing the same thing. And so I would nicely try to point out, look at that. Both modes are doing that. Right. Right. Who yeah. who's at risk here? 
Yeah. Um, who's which, the more which vulnerable? interestingly too, I mean, I don't know if the, the safety stop law had passed by then, but, uh, Earlier in this video, um, uh, you know, astute viewers would notice that, you know, I was stopped at the stoplight. I did eventually go through that intersection and when it was safe for me to go, do so. It was still red at the time, but although I, it did turn green um, by the time I was halfway across. But yeah, now the Colorado safety stop law is in place, which means that people who are riding a bike must treat a, a stop sign like a yield sign and, and treat a stop light like a stop sign and only proceed to go forward when it's safe to do so. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that too, is that there's that, that stereotype of who rides a bike. And unfortunately, that stereotype for too long in North America in particular has been, you know, the mammal. It's like me, you know, the middle-aged dude who's on his racing bike wearing Lycra, Lycra you know, that that's what mammal, by the way, stands for folks, mi middle, middle-aged uh, man in Lycra. And, and so it's important to understand that, no, 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 no. What we're really talking about here is a safer, more inviting environment for, for everyone walking or biking and driving, using transit. What we're really talking about here is, is quality of life and livability. Yeah. And, and along with that, a lot of misconceptions out there, such as all, all cyclists run, run stop signs. Um, like you mentioned, it's, it's now okay to, um, in the way that you described run a stop sign as a cyclist here in Denver. But when I did hear those, those false, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is when I heard people say things that were not accurate, I tried to correct them. And, um, I always tell people that are getting into advocacy to find your, use the skills that you have to, um, to advocate for, uh, like combine biking and if you're a writer, combine those two things. I'm a graphic designer. I use that in my advocacy. A friend of mine is um, really good at research. So I, I had these facts I could pull out of my head when they would say, oh, look at that uh, person running the stop sign on the bike. Well, they would say, look at the cycle, look at that bike, run the stop sign. Um, I, I would say, well, actually, uh, cyclists and drivers break the law at the same rate. And here's my source. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I, I was paused on this just because I wanted to give some love to this hardworking little machine here. This is actually I, I, I caught the, uh, the 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 bike lane uh, sweeper, sweeper in action. Uh -huh. Yeah, beloved yeah, these so little cute. guys are. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you have folks who may be tuning in. This so why are, why the fascination of over, over that is that um, protected bikeways like like this um, oftentimes get a lot of debris that sort of gathers in there. So having the ability to have the appropriate machinery for appropriate maintenance to be able to, to, to sweep up that debris, especially if there's some broken glass, uh, and things of that nature, really does help uh, make the overall environment that much safer for, for the families that are riding on, on this as well as yeah. the, uh, yeah. the recreation. And they have the, the mini snow plows also yes. that come through. Yeah. Love those. I, I, I had to tell you that, um, A, I, I went out of my way to, to, to ride this, like I said, and film this and, and be able to do this. And this is the reason why it made me so happy to see it is it just really exemplified when you see people walking and biking in this environment and you see how much safer it is for families to be able to do this. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, a tragedy had to happen or it did happen. And, and but it's it's wonderful and gratifying to see that, you know, you all who fought so hard to get this in place and on the ground uh, to, to be able to see it come to, to fruition. Um, yeah, yeah, it was really a, a group effort. And my first brush with the Denver Bicycle uh, advocacy community, Denver Bicycle Lobby, mainly organized that group. And um, it's a great group here in Denver. I, I just, there's so much support. There's always somebody that, um, I mean, people, I, I love that it's, they, they work with zero 
budget. They have zero employees. Yet when um, something like this happens, they they show up and um, uh, people come out of the woodwork to, to show support because it's sad to say, but you you do need to do that sometimes to show show the city or show the rest of the community that uh, we do exist. People do care passionately um, about you know safe street infrastructure, and uh, you can't let you can't be drowned out by the uh, people who are resistant to change. Amy, thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. It's Thanks It's been such a pleasure me. chatting with you. I'm devastated that you're not going to be at the, the Viva Streets in July, but I'm great, absolutely uh, grateful that we were uh, able to ride together a couple Saturdays ago for the Ride for Racial Justice and uh, just so stoked to have you here on the Active Towns podcast. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Amy. And if you did, please remember, give it a thumbs up, <laughs> leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. And if you're enjoying this content, please consider becoming an Active Towns ambassador. You can support me on Patreon, buy me a coffee, uh, YouTube super thanks right down below, as well as making a donation to the nonprofit and buying things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit helps and is much appreciated. Thank you all so much and we'll see you soon. This is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.